And it's red in the center and blue all around With a ribbon of gold in between And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen Very, very exciting and <laughs> really rare to see that. Ha <laughs> ha, but what? Well, on the east coast of Cape York Peninsula, a long way up, you'll find Iron Range National Park. And if you're there at the right time, you just might catch Christina Denick studying the palm cockatoo. And needless to say, she's pretty excited about them. They're the only non-human species known to create a tool in a non-foraging context. You take chimpanzees, right? They make a tool to get food to termites, right? You see New Caledonian crows, they're making little sticks and that to get the grubs. And, you know. So they find it throughout the animal kingdom. However, when a palm cockatoo fashions a stick, it has nothing to do with eating. Sometimes these males will go to a live eucalyptus tree and they'll break off the end of a branch, right? And they walk along a little bit further back, about 15 centimeters back chomp again, keep it in the bill, then they fly over to where they want to display, right? And they've got this, this stick that they've fashioned, right? And they come onto the hollow, grab it out of the bill, and they start drumming. So they're showing, they're drumming, right? It's got a certain uh, acoustics to it, right? So you often hear them drumming and they turn their head, right? And they listen to the drumming. Oh, no, that's not a good spot. They walk around to a different part of the hollow, right? Then they start drumming there. And then they'll listen again. So we reckon it's part of, yeah, it's, it's attracting the female. Hey, look at this hollow. Have a listen. This is a live tree. It's not going to fall over in a cyclone. It's not going to burn when the fires come. Look at ash goes to show this is a fire prone country. These hollows that are that important and are really the limiting factor for how many breeding individuals you can have in a population for the species. Sometimes they just get burned if it's too intense of a fire. You just have complete destruction of the hollows. So that drumming is showing something about that tree, something about that hollow to the female who's a prospective mate. But a field of study is actually recording their calls to determine the level of communication between the birds. This is my best recording. So each of these dark spots is a call. That's hello. Yeah, and here's the whistle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. What is that? Yeah, that's, that's what I call pop toy. That's a, one of the... So, throughout the dry season, till as late as she dares, she lives in this little shack on the edge of the rainforest and goes out to study the birds. And sometimes she just gets lucky. I've been studying this bird for five months, morning, afternoon, every single day. I've seen that activity that we've just seen twice. That is the second time. So, pretty stoked on that. We don't know whether it is a chick or an egg but we do know that they're nesting and that was a nest exchange. And from what I've seen so far, this will likely lead to a successful fledgling as long as a predator doesn't go after that egg or fledgling. To me, that seems like a very experienced pair. So they've done this many times over and over. So they've probably bred for decades together. These are very long-lived birds and they've just got it down pat, eh? Just go in, switch, you know, have a look, switch out, boom. Not even a kiss. Not even a kiss goodbye. <laughs> in the center and blue all around With a ribbon of gold in between And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen